Hello friends, a warm welcome to yet another interesting session on instrumentation and control in power plant industries. Our today's topic of discussion is Coriolis mass flow meter. Friends, in all our previous sessions, we have discussed about volumetric flow meters, whether it is electromagnetic flow meter, ultrasonic flow meter, turbine type flow meter, vortex, rotameter, orifice, venturi, pitted tube, all are giving volumetric flow rates we know volume is mass into density and the density is dependent on pressure and temperature basically density is directly proportional to the pressure and is inversely proportional to temperature friends even in petrol pumps you may have observed that on the machine there is a meter indicator showing the density of the petrol or diesel it is always advised to fill the vehicle early morning as the temperature is low and the fuel density is higher. So friends, your 5 liter petrol filled in bike during morning may be heavier than the same 5 liter petrol filled during daytime when the temperature would be relatively higher. We know the volume is in liters while the weight is in kilograms etc. Suppose you are purchasing water from somewhere or gas from somewhere to run your power plant or maybe selling your steam produced to other refinery or desalination plant or maybe selling your steam for desticating then there is a requirement of metering it accurately or even to check your boiler efficiency you may have to precisely measure the inputs consumed like water and the output produced like steam so in all these cases the volumetric flow measurement will be misleading as the actual quantity will differ if the pressure and temperature conditions vary that is it is dependent on the process conditions process pressure and temperature conditions the volumetric flow measurement will be different basically what we do with this volumetric flow measurement is we density compensated it compensated with respect to temperature and pressure the volume metric flow signal is transferred to our control system that is the DC system also we measure the process pressure and temperature and send these values to our DC system each flow instrument is calibrated under certain specific pressure and temperature conditions and these values are written on the calibration certificate and also on the instrument data sheet by the engineer who has calibrated this instrument these values serve as the reference pressure and temperature values the deviation of the current measured process pressure and temperature with respect to these reference values is calculated and this is the basis of density compensation for these volumetric flows now if we need direct mass flow measurement instead instead of all these conversions to be done in dcs then we may use mass flow meters from all these uh, these discussions it is clear that mass flow meters must not only measure the flow volume but also it is measuring fluid density so that it can directly give the reading in terms of mass flow terms clear now coming to coriolis mass flow meters a coriolis mass flow meter works on coriolis effect hence it is uh, named so and uh, if the French scientist uh, basically French physicist uh, Gaspard Gustave the Coriolis set out the physical basis for this measuring principle over uh, 200 years ago in simple terms to understand Coriolis effect when a freely hanging hose pipe is filled with water as shown in this left side picture it swings back and forth but it does not twist however when water flow is turned on the water is forced through this swinging hose and this uh, the hose twists we can observe this twist in this right side picture the hose twists as a result of the changing angular velocity in the curved hose that's the Coriolis, uh, Coriolis effect in action similar to what we have seen in the hanging pipe in 
our previous slide the tubes in upper coriolis flow meter also twist when the fluid is flowing through them however the swinging effect in this case is generated by magnetic repulsion the tubes uh, are magnetic in nature and say and uh, also a same polarity magnet is installed in the flow meter this magnet is called drive coil basically thus the magnet and the tubes repel each other but due to gravity the tube tends to regain its original shape this way the tube starts swinging coming to its components first component is flow tube basically we have this tube split into two parallel tubes these tubes inside coriolis flow meter carry fluid from its inlet point to the outlet point the outer body of these tubes are made up of magnetic material variations in the oscillation frequency of these tubes generate a relationship to measure volume density and fluid velocity our second important part is drive coil that is the magnet here the tubes are not flexible as we saw in the hanging pipe example thus to generate this swinging effect in the tubes we need some force in this case it's magnetic repulsion force then the third important parts are the sensors the sensors uh, basically we have two sensors installed in coriolis flow meters these sensors are called coriolis pickup sensors one sensor is installed at inlet side while the other is in, is on the outlet side of the tube that is one upstream of this exciter coil and one downstream of this exciter coil these sensors measure the oscillating frequency and generate sine waves other parts include the casing the flange connections at the inlet and outlet side to install it in process pipeline as we can see in this picture the flow meter has dual parallel flow tubes when the process fluids fluid enters the flow meter it is split into two parts half of the fluid passes through the uh, through each tube during operation a drive coil simulates the tubes to oscillate in opposition to each other at the natural resonant frequency of the tubes the sensors called the inlet and outlet coriolis pickup sensors are mounted on the flow tubes as shown in this picture as the tube oscillates the voltage generated from each pickup creates a sine wave the sine wave generated indicates the motion of one tube relative to the other tube when there is no flow in the tubes the inlet and outlet sine waves are in phase means they are in synchronized motion however when fluid is flowing through the sensor tubes coriolis forces are induced in both the flow tubes these forces cause the flow tubes to twist in opposition to each other as a result of this twist in the flow tubes the sine waves are shifted in phase with respect to each other and are asynchronous the time delay measured between the two sine waves is in microseconds and is called delta t or dt this delta t is directly proportional to the mass flow rate the greater the delta t created by the coriolis forces the greater is the mass flow rate now coming to the frequency density while the sine wave phase shift indicates the mass flow rate the wave frequency indicates the density when the fluid density changes the vibration frequency of the tubes also changes consider an example of a spring and weight system a large mass has a lower frequency of oscillation while a smaller mass has a higher frequency of oscillation in a coriolis flow meter the tubes correspond to the spring and uh, the mass of the tube and the fluid contained correspond to the weight of at the end of the spring clear the analogy that we are comparing our coriolis mass flow meter with this spring and weight system 
this spring is basically nothing but our tubes and this weight is basically the mass of the tube and the fluid that is inside that that tubes this we know the stiffness of the flow meter remains essentially constant thus the mass and density of the fluid contained in the fixed volume of the flow tube is the only variable affecting the frequency volumetric flow can also be derived from the uh, from this mass flow measurement we can also derive our volumetric flow flow because we know the mass we know the density then mass flow measurement multiplied by this density is gives us the volumetric flow measurement this coriolis mass flow meters provide high highly accurate direct mass flow measurement now coming to the types basically depending on the manufacturer and the application where it is used the tubes in the coriolis flow meter can be of different shapes like straight tube s shaped tube u shaped tube or v shaped tube the outer casing but obvious uh, will be looking according to the shape inside the tubes to accommodate those tubes basically and uh, there are some points that should be uh, taken care during the installation of coriolis flow meter installation like uh, the first point is uh, as the coriolis flow meters are highly sensitive to vibrations any external vibrations can cause error in the measurement thus the pipeline where it is required to be installed must be free from vibrations second is uh, both side of the flow meter must be supported rigidly also if there is any chance of bubble formation in the fluid this bubble can cause uh, our basically air ingress basically and air release valve oh sorry air release device must be installed in its upstream flow then uh, if control valve must be installed on the downstream side of, of the coriolis flow meter to increase back pressure and lower the chances of cavitation coming to its advantages and disadvantages uh, using coriolis mass flow meter gives us some advantages as follow these are uh, the first advantages it is easier uh, to implement and install in case of any fluids it does not require any special build inlet and outlet connection moreover it can measure mass flow volume flow and density with a single device it is highly accurate and reliable with low maintenance it does not have any effect on the accuracy of measurement with pressure temperature and viscosity and one more thing is it is bidirectional we, we can it can operate in bidirectional flow it also has a self draining facility as with other devices the there are some disadvantages to the measurement effect by any gas inclusion in the fluid flow this device is vibration sensitive and um, and can provide false output coming to its cost it is comparatively costlier than other mass flow meters and uh, it has a limited temperature range cannot be used to measure fluid flow with the low density and pressure restricted nominal size range cannot be used for more than 8 nominal bore line size huge pressure loss when measuring a liquid with high saturated vapor pressure so friends this was all about coriolis mass flow meter their principle their application and their limitation and their specific installation requirement hope i am able to clear the concept well we'll meet you in our next video till then stay safe stay healthy take care bye